call the January 19, 2022 regular board meeting of the Niles Main District Library to order. Robert, please call the roll. Trustee Derbalik? Here. Trustee Schoenfeld? Here. Trustee Makula? Here. Trustee Wazan? Here. Trustee Olson? Here. And Trustee Keith? Here. Next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America, for which it stands, for one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Time, I will reiterate the rules of our board meeting. As board president and presiding officer, it is my responsibility to preserve and maintain decorum at all times during official meetings of the library board. As such, this board will not tolerate outbursts and interruptions during our meetings. I am asking that each member of the public respect that and to conduct yourself accordingly. If on the other hand, you do interfere with the orderly conduct of the meeting or you persist in disorderly disruptive conduct, I will have to ask you to leave the meeting. Any conduct which interrupts the consideration of the library district business is considered disruptive, including but not limited to shouting out clapping, snapping, hissing, etc. during the meeting. Public participation and comment will be permitted during the public comment portion of the agenda consistent with the library rules. Remarks shall be made from the speaker's podium only. Abusive and profane comments will not be permitted and will promptly be ruled out of order. If you persist, you will no longer be allowed to speak. The board vests in me as the board president the authority to terminate the remarks of speakers who fail to adhere to the rules. Individuals addressing the board must at all times adhere to the library policies and other rules as may be necessary for the efficient and orderly conduct of the meeting. All public comments shall be addressed to the board as a whole and no comments shall be addressed to individual members of the board library staff or other members of the public body. Can I question something? Just a minute, please. Right. Whenever you're ready to allow me to ask you a question. Okay, I'm sorry, yes, Patty, what can I um, answer? At our last meeting, wasn't there an attorney who told us that the statement you just made is not proper, that it is illegal for us to tell our residents they cannot talk to us as individuals. Excuse me, Patty. I'm asking you a question. Patty, that is not for us to decide. And right now it's not an agenda item. So I'd like to conduct well, the rest you. of the meeting, okay? Oh. Number four on the agenda is public comment. Cindy, would you please call the first person that's up for public comment? We're starting at 636. Um, I, I have 635, but it's fine. Okay, 635. Elliot Osherman. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Elliot Osherman. I'll spell that. It's E L I O T O S H E R M A N. <clears throat> I represent C A R T T S which is the Committee Against Retention of the Three Snoozers. That means the three people on the right side, the ones I have referred to in the past as Loretta, Shirley, and No. I will address my comments with nine declarative sentences, 
before I get to the gist of my comments, which is enriching the vocabulary of the board. I am addressing the entirety of the board during the rest of this statement. Those nine sentences are, one, I will neither be interrupted nor silenced. Two, we will neither be interrupted nor silenced. Three, the community will neither be interrupted nor silenced. Four, I will remember this. Five, we will remember this. Six, the community will remember this. Seven, I will vote on April 4th, 2023 against the retention of the three snoozes. Eight, we will vote on April 4th, 2023 against the three snoozes. Nine, the community will vote on April 4th, 2023 against the three snoozes. Ma'am, if you'd like to follow along, you have a copy in front of you as well. No, thank you, I'm fine. So I was afraid of. The model of the library is to engage, inform, enrich, educate. With that in mind, I would like to add some adjectives to the vocabularies of the board members. The first is arbitrary, A-R-B-I-T-R-A-R-Y, subject to individual will or judgment without restrictions, contingent only upon one's discretion, such as ruling one speaker out of order during public comments, while letting other speakers continue. The second is dilatory, that's D-I-L-A-T-O-R-Y, tending to delay or procrastinate, such as posting agendas at the last minute, such as calling for special meetings with minimal notice. The third is incompetent, that's I-N-C-O-M-P-E-T-E-N-T, -E -E not competent, lacking qualification or ability, incapable, such as A, a president who does not understand what the official board minutes should represent and consistently refuses to approve proposed submitted minutes unless they quarter specifically and in great detail. A president who does not use paid staff to provide expertise, such as paying $600 to an accounting firm to generate tax levy options when in prior years, the business manager had generated those options, such as limiting responses to media requests when there's an individual on staff whose responsibilities include marketing and responses to those requests, such as B, a board secretary who does not inform the Illinois Attorney General and the Illinois Secretary of State of a board vacancy within 60 days of the resignation of a board member, such as C, a treasurer who does not send out a check that represents the middle year of a three-year contract, thus possibly incurring greater interest and possibly a penalty. The fourth is unethical, that's U-N-E-T-H-I-C-A-L, lacking moral principles, unwilling to adhere to proper rules of conduct, such as hiring the campaign videographer of the three snoozers to conduct an IT audit. When that videographer applied to do the work, he, his self-submitted background check was generated. When FOIA'd, the entire background check was redacted. When that videographer applied for consideration of the board to become a trustee, he indicated neither he nor his company did business with the library. The fifth is unprofessional. That's U-N-P-R-O-F-E-S-S-I-O-N-A-L. At variance with or contrary to professional standards or ethics. This might be familiar to you as the fellow the board hired to present tax levy options, the $600 cost mentioned earlier, had used it himself to describe his opinion of the board. This includes such actions as interrupting fellow board members in the middle of their sentences. This includes gaveling members of the public into silence because a board member feels disrespected. This includes promising board members that a given item will be on the agenda of the next meeting and then not putting it on the agenda. At the end of the November meeting, when several trustees asked for consideration of a hiring freeze be put on the December agenda, it wasn't. And by the way, it's not on tonight's agenda either. Let's summarize. Without naming names, because someone on the board does not comprehend the difference between addressing a person and referring to that person. The oath sworn to become a trustee indicates that he or she will do the job to the best of their ability. I don't know which concerns me more, that the three snoozes are performing to the best of their ability or they're not. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Uh, 
Hi, I'm Steve Foga. I've been a resident of Niles for about 20 years. And um, what I'm going to talk about is an idea that the Niberry Board could use to help our residents in pursuing a technical skills upgrade. And so if you look at the uh, Chicago Tribune, if you look at the Sunday Tribune, they generally have a advertisement talking about Homer Township Library having a program that allows their residents to apply for a Google, uh, for a Google Career Certificate Scholarship. Excuse that allows- me, Can you speak up a little bit or closer because it's hard to hear you. Maybe I think there's a problem the with the feedback on this. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, excuse me for a second. Um, what it means is that this allows the residents to apply for a Google Career Certificate Scholarship. That allows them to get flexible online training. They could look at jobs over in data analytics, IT support, project management, cybersecurity, UX design. So in general, those people get around $120,000 per year on an annual salary. And so the Homer Township Library website states that this program allows their residents to learn these skills within six months. Okay. Okay. Well, what I think we should be doing here at the library is investigating this kind of a program. I think it could be implemented for our residents. And so this would help our individual residents be able to prepare them for in-job, for a uh, current in-demand job, and help attract young residents to our library. And then this would allow... Okay, that's the problem. I can't breathe with this thing. Um, so in general, what I would think we should do is ask the library director to contact Homer Township, get the information about this, provide this information back to the board, provide it to us as a resident so that we could be able to get look at the pros and cons of this type of a program. I think it's positive. I think we should be looking at positive ways of being able to move, get information for our residents together, help them to be able to build up their skills. And so if we do this, we could look at the disadvantages of this type of a, a certificate program. I would be interested in looking into this myself. And so if we can do this, I hope that we can have a really deep discussion about the pros and cons of such of a program. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your Uh, Ram Villa Balam. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ram Villa Balam, State Senator for the 8th District, uh, which includes uh, 21 neighborhoods in the city of Chicago and six suburbs in Cook County uh, Lincolnwood, Skokie, Niles, Morton Grove, uh, Unincorporated Displains, and Glenview. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you today and thank you all for being here and being a part of this process, uh, including uh, Deputy Majority Leader, Leader Murphy, who's here today as well. I'd like to read a letter that we've uh, wrote as a group of elected officials uh, to the board. Dear trustees, we feel strongly that our Niles main district library is a gem in our community. And as such, we want to protect library resources so it may thrive and continue to provide the valuable services to our community's residents. For that to happen, we strongly believe the board has a responsibility to ensure staffing and programming to remain at the levels our constituents expect and deserve. Already with the hiring freeze that's in place and the attrition that has occurred, there is not sufficient staff to cover public facing desks at all times. This is especially pronounced at the children's desk where demand is high. With technology classes that require significant planning and maintenance, which performs so many critical functions that are often invisible until staffing is such that they cannot all be done. Unfortunately, some programming has already been eliminated due to understaffing. Please, please lift the hiring freeze currently in place so that everyone who comes through the doors of our community's library continues to have a pleasant experience and a clean 
an amp and safe environment. I come to you as a state senator for the 8th district. I also come to you as a kid that went to the library every day when I was in fifth and sixth grade. Someone that felt the library was a safe place, was a place I can learn, was a place that I could be myself. And I'll tell you, when I talk to people across my district, knocked on over 10,000 doors in my district, one of the first places they talk about in terms of where their youth are able to go, where they're able to go, where their parents are able to go, are our libraries. And so I come to you asking you consider everything that's in this letter, which is, by the way, not only from myself, Representative, State Representative Lindsay LaPointe, State Senator Rob Martwick, Com Commissioner Larry Sufferden, and Committee Woman Josina Morita. I come to you to please do the, do the right thing, do the items that we listed in our letter. And we stand ready. I stand ready to work with you from whatever, whatever I can do in my capacity. But please do the right thing. It can be done. People need the services. We need to treat the workers at the library with dignity and respect. We've been able to balance budgets and invest in the programs and our workers. We did it at the state level. First time in 20 plus years, we have a, a round of credit rating upgrades for our state. And we didn't have to cut. We didn't have to treat our work, mistreat our workers to do it. So with that, I would like to submit those remarks and submit this letter to the record. Thank you so much. Thank well, just you. One quick question. Did you say you were sending us that letter or you're just reading it? Are we can, I can give you this mail? copy. I can give you this copy right now. Okay, oh, I'd appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, I'm glad to see you here this evening. I have been um, looking forward to uh, possibly having a conversation with you regarding a couple of issues. This one, obviously, that you brought up tonight and a few others that were brought up um, earlier in the summer. But I'm glad you're here, and um, I welcome the opportunity to have some time to speak with you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Rob, Roberto Batello. Good evening, uh, members of the board and the general public. My name is Roberto Botello. I'm here speaking to you as a resident of Niles for the, uh, just over 20 years, raising a family here. And uh, I come to share some of my thoughts with regards to uh, the status of our wonderful community, wonderful library that I have been extremely proud of over this past 20 years, um, used it many, many times. My children continue to use it, and we hope that it will continue to be here for many more years. Um, I, as um, a resident am willing to contribute financially by increasing my tax burden to be able to continue these services. Uh, I've shared conversations with some of my neighbors and they too, I hear from them that they're willing to accept a higher tax in order to provide the services that this library has done for so many years. We feel, uh, well, I'll speak for myself and that I feel that the people that run this library uh, certainly are able to produce professional work. And I hope that the, the, the current actions by the board will not hinder that. Um, this is a time when I came out to speak because I feel that the board has taken some actions that threaten the ability to continue to carry those services, uh, services that I think are a great investment. So having an increase in my tax dollars, I feel is that necessary investment 
to continue to provide the level of professionalism and quality that all communities across this country should have. Um, and I would hate for Niles to lose some of that. So I'm going to do whatever it takes, not just support the employees here, uh, but also to encourage my neighbors to come out during election and vote with me in support of continuing services and advocating for increased levies that will provide the necessary funds to provide for this continuing services. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. James F U H, not sure how to pronounce it. <clears throat> Good evening to the board and the public. Tonight, you guys will be voting or selecting a person to fill in the currently vacant trustee position that's been long overdue. And it is my hope that the diversity of this community will be strongly considered during the selection progress. I wanna go back to just over a year ago or under a year ago rather. Um, one of the trustees has said publicly in response to the most softball of questions regarding the diversity of this community that foreign language materials should be deprioritized out of circulation in this library because the members of this community should assimilate, assimilate his words, assimilate to the English language. Upon hearing that for the first time, I was appalled by the racist dog whistle underlying that comment. We should not have to remind you that this is a community run by immigrants, by the children of immigrants, by people who speak Spanish, Gujarati, Urdu, Russian, Polish, Korean, Tagalog, all over the world. And that extends to people of various religious backgrounds and the LGBTQ community, by the way. Diversity should be worked with and appreciated, not to be looked down upon and to be dominated over. As someone that kind of, I struggled with the diaspora, right? Of trying to fit in with Western culture while being raised by Korean immigrant parents. And for the past few decades, a couple of decades, I have been happy with a lot of the social progress we've made collectively as a nation, as a community, but clearly there is more work to be done. Diversity matters. It may not matter to you guys individually on a day-to-day -day basis, but you guys represent a community. Diversity matters to a community at large. I urge the board tonight to take this into consideration during the selection progress. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Lynch. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Lynch. My pronouns are she, her. Every time I walk into this library, I see people that reflect the diversity of this community. The people that actually use this library, like our community, are black and brown. They wear hijab and yarmulkes. They are disabled. They are neurodivergent. They are gay and lesbian and trans. They speak Spanish, Urdu, Arabic, and Korean. Seeing all the diversity of my community inside these walls makes me proud of my library. But that diversity is not reflected on this board. 
I have heard many times from several of the trustees and their supporters that numbers don't lie. The latest census data shows that our community has become even more diverse, second only to Skokie in the number of residents born outside of the US. It showed that when Joe McCullough concluded that the taxpayers who speak and read a language other than English don't deserve to have books in those languages, he was talking about a majority of the residents of Niles. In fact, at Maine East High School, English is not the primary language in 75.5% of the homes. But he and two other members of our board don't seem to care about those numbers, maybe because their world is limited to the people that speak their language and look like them and share their faith. There is an opportunity to change the representation on this board tonight. The applicants for the vacancy are of different races and ethnicities, different religions and sexualities. They live, like almost half of the taxpayers to, in, to this library, in areas outside of Niles. All of these are much needed perspectives on a board with trustees that have chosen, again and again, to ignore the needs of marginalized groups outside their personal experience. And these applicants come with valuable work and volunteer experience as well. They are business owners, lawyers, and analysts. They have experience on other government boards. Now, I think that perhaps three of the trustees will be tempted to yell that they are the victims here, accused of being racist. So let me be clear. I cannot know if Carolyn Derblick, Joe McCulla, and Suzanne Schoenfeld are racist or anti-Semitic or homophobic or anti-Muslim. I do not know if they have hate in their hearts. I hope not. I can only judge their actions. When you look at the applicants before you, when you have an opportunity to build a board that better represents our community, and instead you choose someone that looks just like you and worships with you, that is your personal friend, or that worked on your campaign. It might not be called racism, but it is certainly called wrong. I call on trustees Derblick, Makula, and Schoenfeld to do what is right tonight, to do what is moral, to put the people of this community before your friends. And if you can't do that, resign. David Sutherland. Hello, my name is David Sutherland and my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm an organizer with Niles Coalition. And as part of our Save Niles Library campaign, we launched a letter writing action just a few months ago. Community members joined in sending messages to our Illinois state senators, representatives, and the secretary of state. Community members pleaded for help because Carolyn Derblick, Susan Schoenfeld, and Joe McCullough are wrecking this library that we, the community, have built up over generations. Part of how they are doing this is by refusing to fill staff vacancies, which is an unjust, unjust treatment of library workers. They are stalling the appointment of a new trustee, probably hoping to get one of their white Niles buddies in and they're implementing draconian policies to censor public comments, trying to avoid accountability and obscure the truth. One of the results of this action that the community collaborated on was a letter sent by the Illinois State Library to this board warning Susan Schoenfeld of her failure to report the board vacancy to the county clerk and state librarian. Our campaign may be called Save Now's Library, but not enough is said about our community members in Maine Township who make up half of who this library serves. It is the diversity of this district that makes this library so great, which is not something Joe McCullough would understand who abuses his power as trustee to insist that our community members assimilate by learning English. It is clear that these three trustees are trying to drag the library into the past 
While we, the community, yearn for future forward thinking that will ensure we have the library we all deserve. That is something a board consisting solely of older white Niles residents can't determine without broader representation. Thank you. Renee Sutherland. Hello, my name is Renee Sutherland. My pronouns are she, her, hers. You can read on our library's website that, quote, in 1957, a referendum passed establishing the Niles Public Library District, taking in parts of Niles Township and Maine Township. Its first board of trustees were elected in 1959, end quote. So in the beginning, it was called the Niles Public Library, but since 1957, this library district has included parts of Niles Township and Maine Township. And a few years ago, the library officially changed its name to the Niles Maine District Library to reflect the district that the library has served all these decades. The district includes around 59,000 residents. About half of us live in the village of Niles. Half of us live in unincorporated Maine Township. There's a framed map upstairs to help you visualize the district that our library serves. We currently have, as people have noted, only Niles residents serving as trustees on this board. And I would like to remind you that among the applicants for the vacant trustee position, there's one extremely qualified applicant who is a resident of unincorporated Maine Township. Something I've noticed at last month's board meeting here, trustee McCullough said that the lawsuit he and his associates are pursuing against another trustee is quote unquote political. At the board meeting two months ago, when trustees Rosansky, Olson, and Keene were, as they have many times now, uh, were imploring Trustee Derblick to put on the next agenda a discussion of lifting her hiring freeze. Ms. Derblick, I heard you say that you thought it was one of the recommended agenda items. How you can't know whether you're going to agree to discuss the ending of the hiring freeze yet or not makes me wonder who is telling you what to do. You ultimately didn't include the hiring freeze on that next agenda, despite other trustees and library directors requests. You still didn't include it on tonight's agenda either, as people have pointed out. So I wonder who you were getting your recommendations from. Your ongoing refusal to allow the director to recruit for and fill any vacant non-managerial positions is certainly not what the state librarian Jesse White's office would recommend. It's not what the Illinois Library Association or the American Library Association would recommend. No, like Mr. McCool's decisions, this appears awfully politically motivated too. Now I know that you haven't been a library trustee for long, Mrs. Schoenfeld, and you've been following your friend, Ms. Derblick's lead. And at first, maybe you didn't understand what was going on, but by now it must be clear to you that filling the board vacancy for all, not filling the board vacancy for all these months and refusing to allow the director to fill staff vacancies, this is not how an Illinois library works. Spending thousands and thousands of dollars of our taxpayer money on lawyers due to your violations of the Open Meetings Act and your violations of the Freedom of Information Act and refusing to properly fund, properly staff, and properly maintain the library in the hopes that you can just run it into the ground. Whoever's recommending that you do what you've been doing, they're giving you bad advice. This library has been celebrated and recognized for years as a star library. The community counts on this library. And the fact that you got in here due to a historically low turnout election is no mandate for the bizarre anti-library actions you've been taking. Members of the community have been asking the three of you for eight months now to change your course and allow our library to run as it should or resign from these trustee positions that you've been abusing. Trustees Derblick, McCullough, and Schoenfeld, stop violating Illinois statutes Stop acting in your own interests, ignoring the interests of the rest of the residents of our library district, or please resign and allow people who are capable of serving our library district to do so. Thank you. Thank you. That ends public comments. That's it? Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, Cindy, um, before I move on, I, I would like to um, request that you and I revisit my... Um, conversation with you regarding department staffing information because I think it's time to move forward. Um, I know we've had some 
conversations and based on the public comments this evening, it would be um, helpful to try helpful to try to get that process moving. Um, it affects staffing um, in terms of the comments that they're unable to provide services to patrons. There are staff members who have left and, and gone elsewhere for jobs. And again, I really need to get a handle on all of these departments and what's actually happening so we can have a better conversation about this. You know, I could probably tell you that information because it's already been given to us. Uh, no, thank you. Oh, please don't interrupt. <laughs> I would Here we like go. I would like to suggest again a committee meeting, committee of the whole to talk about personnel issues because you know one on one meetings do not. I, I have nothing work. against the committee, but I like I said before, a committee of the whole is perfect, but that means the information that I'm requesting that we need to evaluate this library staffing situation has to be made available because. You have, have to identify the information that you want and we can provide it, but. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. You need to identify what information you need to inform the process. Right. I There's think, a I lot of information. A few emails, but I'll, I'll go, no, I'll go back to it. And well, send it to everybody, please. Thank oh, you. I can copy, please, well, please I can do. send it to you and then you can copy it to them, but you can send it to them. But the point is, I'm not looking for another argument. I'm not looking for another fight every time. We've had meetings, if someone wasn't barging in or somebody wasn't screaming and yelling, we don't accomplish much. But what's important is if the data that's requested could be received, it would give us all a very good idea of the department. And I understand now that your position is you'll get an, an answer from each one of us. And hopefully we will all agree that the information I'm requesting is important enough for us to reevaluate the department and have a committee meeting. But it's all about getting the information as well. I've heard comments, I've, I've seen um, comments made on social media, but I'm looking for actual information. We've actually heard at meetings that there are programs that they're not able to run I know. because of lack of staff. Okay, those are what more information do okay, you need? I'm looking, all right. Please I'm, draw I'm, it out for her so she knows right, what you expect. We've already talked about it and I'll be more than glad to re revisit that. Okay. And I, I think wait, it's Wait, I don't I appreciate emails that Excuse me, me, may I finish? Let her finish. Um, I just think, I think that it's all time need to talk about. This. I think that it's time we move forward on the subject matter. That well, it's certainly, coming up we all need to talk about it. Right, we I'm needed sorry. to move I'm forward sorry. about five months ago when we started asking you. The information that you need is in the letter that Senator Billy Vallon brought tonight. That's all you need to know. Right, can we stop interrupting? You're all out of order. If we could please this continue is, this meeting. This is, let her let her finish. Right, I'm finished with that comment, and now I would like to read some public comments responses. Um, Are we going off agenda? This is, is the this second stuff topic that we don't have on the agenda. Uh, excuse me. I'm asking please a question. Please stop please. interrupting. This is public comments, and yes. I have responses to public comments that have been made in our meetings several times, and I think it's time they're addressed. I don't think this is not on the agenda, not, and it has it never been done before. Be on the oh, if it's not, really? if it's you, it doesn't have to, to be on the agenda. Tonight. Anything we want to say has to be on the agenda or either Strap another. It. Strap okay. it. Okay, excuse me, but you are all out of order. Baloney, you just told me a few minutes ago I was out of order because it wasn't on the agenda, what I asked you. Response excuse me, to public comments is excuse not Excuse me, as presiding not part of this meeting let her let her continue no, because all, we can't we'll be here until 12 30. well we're yeah, not going to sit here her, and listen to her so we can get this meeting no going. we're not going to sit here and listen to that it was the well, public's here. chance to say what they want to say they're not looking for you to respond to anything at this point as presiding you're on number five let her, let her say show what she wants it's her opinion and most of the people would realize it's her opinion only. I mean, we're, what, we got 15 minutes to listen to this? That's fine. As presiding officer, no, no. I am Carolyn, able stop. to respond to public comments. public comments. 
I would like Cindy, to is thank it okay for everyone. her to do stuff that's not on the agenda? I would, this is not no a, idea. Oh my God. Do we need to have an attorney at every board meeting? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. we can follow your own rules. Rules. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe dollars. we do. Follow I would like rules. to thank everyone who provides public comments at our meetings. The board welcomes the passionate input oh from our God. residents really as well as the comments from non residents. <laughs> I encourage everyone interested in public comment topics to research and review the facts available oh in board God. meeting agenda documents and presentations about the subject matter, which subject matters which are available online. Too many public comments have yeah, been personal attacks and gravely misstated information. I would like to provide specific references for facts oh, okay. and data yeah, available for yeah, some of these is, inaccurate cool. public comments. Wow. The roof, the first item is the roof. The roof will collapse oh God, because it was not well, fixed. I was a comment no made November of the roof 17th. today. You don't have a quorum, lady. Look around. You do not have a quorum. Okay, I, I, this meeting is over. Put it on the database. Let people read it. We don't need to listen to it during our meeting. Wait, what are you doing with your phone? Who are you calling for advice? Stop it. Get that out. Oh my God. What do we have here? We have an adjourned meeting, apparently. Yes, we do. Apparently, there's nobody here. So is the meeting adjourned? That's fine with no, me. No, the meeting is not adjourned. Is your speech done? No, it's well, not a speech. Look, I, I'm going to call your phone. The meeting is adjourned. You left. There isn't a quorum. If you will put the meeting, the is, there's nobody here. We don't have a quorum, so I will be leaving as well. Bye. If it's not on the agenda, what we're asking for is for you to stick to the agenda. Come back and sit down. I stay with the agenda and then you can without you telling me it's not on the agenda. We can't handle it. Nobody's going to be here. 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 Nobody's going to be Doing yes, president. Apparently, oh, oh, and you're the director. You could have done something. Oh, wait, here's a thousand dollars being spent. I'm going to call Carolyn. Okay, we'll continue with my responses. No, no, that's the public no. comments. No, how about I read them for you then? The, would address, you please sit excuse down? Me. You are out of order. Uh, well, I guess and I so are you, Carolyn. Yeah. Addressing the roof was not part of tonight's public comments. Okay, I'm serious. I'm responding to the public comments. No, you're ex been no, none of those comments have been made about the roof for months. It's just like the email I sent you on the 28th. When did I get a response? On the 18th of this okay. month. No. Then what are you going to do? Are you done? No. Fine. So, yeah. No, please, Ellie. That isn't solving anything. I think, I think you are. Oh, stop it. Let's move on to approval of minutes, please. Come on, approval of minutes. Let's get this meeting. Public on comment the road. is over and approval of minutes. Talk about what's and on then the you, agenda. Later, after the meeting, you can call the lawyer and spend a thousand bucks. Not now. Excuse me. We're in the middle of a meeting. Oh, approval of minutes. I've been here. I just, uh, right. you know, I, I'm not going to listen to your we'll bullshit. try to stop screaming and yelling. Can you please quit telling us a bunch of garbage that we don't need to hear because Excuse it's not me, on the agenda? Okay. All right. We're Excuse ready. Excuse me, President Derblick. We're ready for approval of minutes. If you want to leave, then Suzanne could continue.
I move to approve the minutes of the December 15, 2020. Out of order. order. Okay, well, she you're, is just, you're not doing anything. Let's well, go. she is. You know, <laughs> the her, respectful comments paper. on this board have destroyed this library. No, you have. Thank you. Stop. Thank you. And since you think I'm disrespectful, some of the things you have said haven't been. Okay, let's just. Okay, let's, let's stop this minutes. name calling, let's stop this garbage, and let's get on with the meeting, please. You can address your comments perhaps in other. That would be acceptable. Yeah, put it Thank on you. The that would be the acceptable. Next, then Thank we you. know when we could listen. The comments had to do with never mind. Let's it's, it's let's for not, other. Excuse let's me, continue. are you going to scream every time I open my mouth? No. Yeah. Just let's please. just continue with the meeting, please. You know, if, if you haven't noticed, the oh, behavior of the go. board ends up being the behavior of the go. public. And okay. then our meeting's a total disaster. Okay, here we go. Yes, let's, mom. Let her go. Please continue, ma'am. Approval of minutes, The next please. item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Thank you. With respect to the trustees, I would like to read the rules that govern the proceedings of the board. Oh my. As you know, the rules of parliamentary practice comprised in Robert's oh. rules of order govern the proceedings of the board. There are certain rules contained within Robert's rules with respect to decorum. By reminding you the rules, I hope it will lead to a more civil and productive debate which is one of the most important concepts underlying parliamentary procedure. Robert's rule of order number seven, debate state speakers must address the remarks to the presiding officer. Be courteous in their language and deportment and avoid all personalities, never allowing never alluding to the officers or other members by name were possible to avoid it, nor to the motives of members. <laughs> Additionally, Robert's Rules of Order number 43, the quorum in debate states, in debate, a member must confine himself to the question before the assembly and avoid personality. Further, the rule states that during debate, no member is permitted to disturb the assembly by whispering or walking across the floor or in any <laughs> other way. Or going on their phone. The key words are disturbing the assembly. All the trustees should refrain from disturbing the assembly and you should encourage others to do likewise. Consistent with Robert rules, I'm asking each of the trustees to refrain from speaking until recognized. Listen to the other side, focus on issues, not personalities, Refer to any other trustee in a respectful manner. Confine remarks to the merits of the pending question. Refrain from attacking a member's motives. The measure, not the member, is the subject of debate. And address your remarks to the chair. Approval of minutes, please. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the December 15th, 2021 regular board meeting? So motion. We have a movement and a second. We now can have discussion. Trustee McCool, do you have any comments? No comments on, on these minutes. Trustee Schoenfeld. Trustee Roseanne. No comments. Trustee Olson. None. Trustee Keene. Yes. I have two comments. Um, I think that it would be nice to note that under trustee reports, trustees McCool and Schoenfeld had no comment. And uh, under other, where it says lawsuit mentioned, it should be saying, it should be changed to say, Trustee Keene read a statement confirming that Treasurer McCoola, along with Robert Zelezny and Gerald Chapansky, filed a lawsuit against her. 
by consent that you have it easier. Okay, do we have a motion to amend the minute? I make a motion to amend the minute. Second. So we'll check the minutes. Well, I mean, we'll check the recording and see if you read the statement. You're well, I, you I didn't read that exact statement, but if something from, if you want to pull the exact words from the meeting, that's fine. I just wanted to reflect more than just lawsuit mentioned. Okay, so we'll re we'll revisit the video and, and yeah. put down what was said. Okay, you'll check the video and, and adapt the minutes accordingly. Okay, that's fine. And then did you get the first one? Okay, so you all agree that uh, if a board member doesn't have any report, it'll say no report? Is that? No, a... I don't no. agree. There's no need for that. The need is to draw a conclusion after month after month when they have no comment about programs that they have attended. It There's is a not pattern. part of the minute. Well, isn't, didn't you explain last month that the trustee reports were to talk positively about things that are happening at the library that they have engaged in? Mm -hmm. To list your comments in the minutes is not part of the minutes. Well, then why are our comments listed saying, there? No comment. The comment you want, the statement you want listed is not part of the minutes. Because you say so. No, because it's not the way it's been done all these years, and there's no need to do that now. You're making that up. No, please, you know, please take the time and go on the library website where all the Let's agendas. Let's do it together so we don't waste our own time. Available and you can see no, since this you just don't want it in there. That's, that that's how it's handled. If it isn't there, it isn't there. You don't need to respond. Well, then maybe you could go to a program and actually say something. Okay, trustee uh, Keen, you are out of order. Please be respectful of the other trustees. So again, this month, everybody who had signed up was able to speak. So the comment that you asked for last month will not be in next month's meeting That's fine. That's until fine. someone's Thank not you. able to speak. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm but sorry. as far what as being the minutes? person who motioned and second, I agree. And since she seconded what she said, she agrees that what she wants on the agenda can be put on the agenda. Because you don't you have to ask the motioner and the original motioner and second. Oh, no, the second was Suzanne. Sorry. Sorry, I, I'm speaking. I was thinking no, it was there's, Diane. There's, there's a process for the minutes. Well, the process was that we will go back and look at the video. Mm -hmm. And if it's in the video, then we'll make the change in the minutes. Yes. So this is a change to add something to the minutes that wasn't said at the meeting, that didn't happen at the meeting. Right. Which... Um, so then that would have to probably be approved by both the mover and the okay. seconder. Well, you, but it didn't really happen at the meeting. But it's right. it's a you format can, change, and basically. Part, if that part isn't in there, can you at least put in the part that Becky had said she would like put in there pertaining to what was said pertaining to the lawsuit? The other, yes, because we'll go back and look at the video. Okay. And now, do we have that vote comment. on that? No, the minutes are approved with that change. So then okay, we go back fine. and we look at the That's video. That's what I'm just the information, and they are approved. I think we do send them out after we make the change, right, to all the board members. But we don't bring them back to the next meeting because you're approving them with the change of what's yes, in the video. That's what I'm saying. As so we amended. still have to vote. You have to I vote to approve the minutes as amended to add Becky's statement That's from fine. the meeting. Thank you. So, um, Margaret, you'll take the role to approve the minutes with the addition, with clarifying Trustee Keene's statement, correct? Right, from other, oh. not with regard to the trustee reports. Exactly. All right. The and then who sees Please take that? The role. Yeah. Who sees that? So then you're, it's sent to all the board members after the change is made. Okay. So we worked real hard to keep the minutes as short as possible. I appreciate how well you're doing. So I mean, just to add a line that 
I understand. This trustee I appreciate. didn't speak, and this trustee didn't speak. So I know. I it. appreciate Thank you. how well you're doing with this. So are we going to take the vote? Thank you. Trustee Derbelik? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Makula? Yes. Trustee Rosensky? Yes. Trustee Olson? Yes. Trustee Key? Yes. The next item on the agenda is payment of bills. Do I have a motion to approve the operating expenses of $203,613.91, payroll expenses of $276,700.46 for a total monthly expense of $480,314.37. So moved. We have a move-in in a second. We will now have discussion. Trustee McCooley, do you have any comments? No comments. The numbers are okay. Trustee Schoenfeld? No Trustee Rosansky? No comments. Trustee Olson? None. Trustee Keene? Yes. Um, I, first of all, like a clarification on why the numbers were on the agenda on Friday. Why they were not on the agenda on Friday? Mm -hmm. Um, because we didn't have the numbers on Friday, and right. Lacey was off Thursday and Friday. So when she came back on Monday, she prepared the numbers. Okay. Um, uh, in the check detail, it has the bill listed for Clark Hill for $1,564. The Kleinsorp and Jenkins bill this month was $6,219 for a total legal fee of $7,783. And that is 200% of our budgeted amount for legal fees for the entire year. Can I even increase that because you forget to say the Evans bill was 2,200. So it's a total lawyer fee, $9,900. $9,900. But they're not lawyers. They're, they're not lawyers. They're accountants. Well, uh, okay. All Close, right. But no cigar. No cigar. <laughs> but the okay. point is that it's 200% yeah. of our okay. legal fees for the year already. So is there any statement about that, President? Can you um, clarify what, what's 200%? What amount are you using? I'm Lawyer using fees. the amount from Excuse the check me. register. You know, if we could all refrain from interrupting, I might be able to hear Trustee Keene. Okay. So the bill for Clark Hill was $1,564. Okay. The bill for Klein, Thorpe and Jenkins was $6,219. Okay. For a total of $7,783. Okay. And that equals 200% of our budgeted amount for legal fees for the year. Uh, no, our appropriation for legal fees this of year. Of the budgeted amount. Our appropriation. Budgeted, that's what I said. Right, I didn't I'm say not going to argue with you. If you don't want to understand how the budget works, then please we just totally state understand. your comment and I won't respond. <laughs> that's for fine. the record, the appropriations for legal fees was increased $500,000. As a matter of fact, it was stated at the public hearing that due to the um, <clears throat> Union oh negotiations God, and the increase in FOIA request this year that an increase in legal fees were apparent. Since the amount could not be determined, $500 was put into appropriations. 500000 So that we can be prepared for whatever legal expenses may arise. So when you look at the budget, we are not above our amount until we go over appropriations. We already said the budget and amount did not include those two items because they could not be determined. So the way it was handled was in appropriations. That's the only way to put in an amount and number that you can't guarantee that's your budget because we have no way of knowing that. And, and I've discussed this before and it was read by the attorney at the public hearing to explain to everyone. So the the fact that we're 200% over budget is incorrect because these expenses were not part of the budget to begin Can with. Can I just say something, please? Just, okay, so we agree 
that it's 200% over, fine. That doesn't exclude you from saying why. Give us an explanation why $7,783 was spent this past month. Well, I, I think On it's what? not a surprise or a secret. The FOIA request going through the library. Okay, that's another astronomical. Oh, can I address okay. FOIA? Excuse me, can I finish? Okay, let, let her finish. Okay. The FOIA, FOIA. requests FOIA going through the library are astronomical. I believe I just read in the journal that they received their 700 or 600 pages of documents that they requested from FOIA. That's quite a bit of information that needs to be reviewed. And that doesn't even count on all the other, that doesn't even include all the other FOIA requests. We're aware of them. They're more than ever. And yes, it, unfortunately, that's the cost. Can't this help is but nothing, think. This has never been I, the situation in the past. So no, it's not no. that it's, it's something okay. that we're doing wrong or incorrect. This never existed in the past. Can't help but think there wouldn't be so many FOIA requests if we change the press policy, number one. And number two, if we were a little bit more transparent with our spending. Well, information to the press will always be evaluated because a request is a request for information. In past years, there has the never media. been this many requests the, by the, the press, and I wonder why. Because the topics and information during mm, this okay. year and, is and a lot different than it's been you. in the past. Thank you for your answer. Okay, let's move on. The next item. Can I finish? Or are, are you still speaking? You know it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> On page 17, the general ledger report. This is old. Um, these expenses were approved and paid months ago, so I don't know why this is included. Oh, you're right. Yes, you're right. This page should not have been included. Okay. So is there... Is this showing in this what they're saying we need to vote on? No. Okay. Just making yeah, sure. Yeah, Lisa told me to remove this and then I didn't. So, okay. No. Thank so you. Should not be it. So, not having a business manager <clears throat> clearly is affecting the meeting and the process of the library. Thank you. Not having a business manager and losing the outside accountants that were supposed to do the work have affected this month's figures. And she did an incredible job of yes, getting this together, and I don't want to take anything away from her oh, ability no, to do that. That's not my intention. Yes, and Cindy, I would like to thank you and Lisi and Margaret and our administrative offices for the immense amount of work they've been doing because it's been one issue after another, and this finance financial situation is even a larger undertaking than anything else, but you have all the three of you have been doing an incredible job. I understand Lisi has really yes. been the person handling finance and please just thank her immensely from this board. We appreciate it. Yeah. It was not my intention to do otherwise. Yes, I know. Okay, so I, I I'm Trustee Keen, is are you complete? Yes. All right, so I believe we're ready for a roll call, Margaret. Thank you. Trustee Derbalik? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Makula? Yes. Trustee Rosanne? Yes. Trustee Olson? Yes. Trustee King? Yes. Six passes. Next on the agenda is Trustee's report. Um, I'm sorry, is the president's report. Um, okay, for several months, our library community, staff, patrons, trustees, and politicians have voiced their personal opinions at our board meetings and various media outlets. 
Through the media and dynamics of the internet, there has developed a negative image of the Niles Main Library, which has reached enormous proportions. Too often, the opinions have drawn power from conflict, stirring up hate and verbal violence. Groups of critics, media mobs searching for a scapegoat, have destroyed the reputations of individuals and businesses by their comments. While creative writing, opinions, omissions, and embellishments are methods of today's news, it seems readers would benefit from facts and verified sources, a practice of the past. While I could spend hours correcting inaccuracies in news articles, I believe it would be beneficial to the public if colorful writing could be secondary to getting it right and uplifting the community. Unfortunately, the Niles Main Library board meetings have also become a display of animosity, false accusations, and a lack of respect for the office of the trustee. In an anonymous letter to the board, we were reminded exactly of this. The writer said, you ran a qualified specialist presenting a levy document out of the room with remarkable, unprofessional bullying and unkindness. In the same way that area roofing contractors refuse to talk to you people, the accounting world should give you the same cold shoulder. I recently read comments, which I found inaccurate and malicious, by Becky K, a library trustee, David S, and Elizabeth L on Yelp against Evans, Marshall, and Peace. For the record, I will correct and clarify. Chris Scalett presented a levy based on documented verifiable information. Fact, the flat levy is based on the 2020 Cook County clerk tax report of $7.19 million. Fact, the, account, the accountants informed us that for the past several years, the library has not complied with its fund balance policy 3.5 to seven. Fact, failing to follow the fund balance policy 3.27 resulted in the library being overfunded approximately 24 months. He also noted that Social Security was underfunded. These figures were based on the recent audit report for accuracy. These Yelp comments that were made were horrific and also damaging to the reputation or horrific in accusing the accountant and also damaging to the reputation of our library. How does this behavior fit in the library's vision or purpose in the community? Of course, board members have differing views, but never have I experienced the bullying, intimidation and harassment as by certain members of this current board. Lastly, I received a signed petition by public officials accusing the board of falsely making cuts, exaggerating employees' costs, and misstating other facts. There were numerous signatures, but for some reason not one of these public officials has contacted me for the truth, yet they all included their names supporting false information. If we would like to be recognized as a star library, as the best deal in town, and as the library community to raise your children, we need to replace this destructive behavior and rhetoric, for starters, with respect, collaboration, professionalism, and kindness. Thank you. Next on the agenda are trustees' reports. I would like to remind the board about the purpose of the trustees report, which was created by former president Tim Spadoni. He said, my theme is to get us to be collaborative and celebratory. We as board members, I hope that are, we are excited about what the library has to offer our community. And I hope that we would be sharing in this enthusiasm and excitement to the public. So I'm going to ask all of us to attend a program or event that we would not normally attend or use an online app or program that we would not normally use. I would like during our meetings 
which I am going to change this president's report to say trustee's report. And then we can have time to address each other very briefly about what we experienced, what did we do in the enjoyment of it? Because I think part of what we should do is being enthusiastic and bring this enthusiasm to the community. So to clarify the trustees report, is it time for trustees to share a library program or event that they attended? The trustees report is not the time to vent, complain, or bring up controversial matters. These topics are discussed during the agenda item other. Thank you. Can I ask a comment, please? Um, I'm, I'm sorry? I just wanted to make ask a question. Mm -hmm. You referenced a signed petition. Mm -hmm. um, could we have a copy of that? Sure. Oh, it's it was oh sure yeah it's, I don't it's think old. I've seen it I've oh no seen it's it. like five months old yeah I'll give you a copy. oh five months old. oh yeah yeah oh it's not it didn't have anything to do with tonight's conversation that's why I was so thrilled to see no I just here okay. I just you're referencing it and and we don't have a copy of it oh gosh no I'll give you a copy no problem at all I think copies of everything you reference would be nice thank you. That would be nice. Well, you'd have to let me know what I reference. I don't know. What it's in your notes. To. I'm sure you can figure oh, it out. Oh, I'm sorry. If there's something that I mentioned that you would like or that I have, I'll give it to you. Just let me know. I am letting you know. Any letter or petition that you mentioned in your statement, please send me a copy. All right, trustees. Are, well, I'm just, okay, and I'm waiting. I'm asking. Okay, so we'll start with the secretary's report. Uh, oh no, the trustee trustees. report Sorry. is before that. Please. Trustee Rosansky. Yes. I Sorry for the before. confusion. Thank you. Who's going first? I, yeah. I don't we know. I just wait called until we are called. We're waiting for you to call you us want, in order. Yes, I, I thought you were yelling at me. I didn't realize you were telling me it's my turn to talk. Is it my turn to talk? Just well, usually you start at the end. I know it's the usually you start with Makula and and Susan, and that's why I was surprised. I didn't realize you were calling me to talk. Now that's what I'm asking. Is that what you? I was, but I'll start with Makula if you prefer. Trump. I don't Makula. prefer anything. Do you have any time? Yes, I do. Um, this I is took... strictly trustee reports about events or um, that you may have attended. That, that's the purpose of this. Then I have no comment. I okay. Comment you, do have, you do have the treasurer report at which time if it's relative, he can All speak right. then or another. Trustee Schoenfeld? No, Trustee Rosansky. Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, I was at both NITWIT meetings. This, the first one, I did it on Zoom. The second one, I came in, and the audio and video that uh, from working with both Zoom and in person at the same time has improved so much. The last meeting, which was Monday, the audio and video were both great i wanted to compliment the uh, department for their work on improving that um i also uh <clears throat> i also wanted to say that for the past two months i just started using libby and uh i don't like saying i'm an addict but i am it's fantastic i've read uh, one ebook and everything else I've take, done is audio. I've done at least six. It's, it's very addicting. I feel there's more to Libby than I ever thought. I'm really, really enjoying it. Next, I'd like to talk about the children's department. And I actually brought in video, or not video, uh, visual aids. Uh, this, happened to be something they did. They made these at the uh, Holly Jolly to announce the winter reading. So they had all the kids make these things up and it talks about the winter. 
reading uh, program. Give me a second. I've got to pull all these things out. And we have a kit that the librarians made up to do snowflakes for this month. This, I think, was fantastic. The librarians came up with a book that shows them both in mask and out of mask because so many of the kids are used to seeing them on Zoom without a mask. When they come in the library, they don't know who the heck they're talking to. So here they have the visuals. It shows them with, with the mask and without a mask. I think this is great. And it's really helpful, especially for the younger ones. Uh, this is a color program they've been doing. This was strict, strictly with Zoom. Uh, it's a color, uh, color with pencil coloring thing. And then the display they had for Martin Luther King uh, was really cool with all of the different books and stuff they had. I really enjoy going in there every time I'm in the library just to see what new they come up with new. Um, let's see. Here we go. This is something I talked about last time. I talked about this one. Uh, this was a program I actually saw where they they made <laughs> this might sound stupid, but it was actually kind of fun. They made a brain out of a dough and baked it and stuff. And then they talked about brains and stuff. And here it's they're called the uh, magnificent makers and they show different scientific type things that the kids can make that was pretty cool this is a game they use at the desk when kids come in which is cool because it also encourages the kids to come and talk to the librarians the younger we can teach them that the librarians are good and they can go and talk to them the better off we are in general and this one is about animals and they had to check off all of the ones that live in the Arctic, which I thought was pretty cool. Good. If any of you have any kids and realize how much they love the IC tank or I spy, excuse me, this was a showing all of the different things they have to find in the I spy tank. That I know for a fact, if my I have my granddaughter, we cannot walk out of that department without going to the tank. <laughs> this is a show of the box they have with all the prizes for the summer reading program. This year, we have had 434 registered for the summer read for the winter, excuse me, when reading program, which runs from uh, beginning of December through January. And uh, they had 437, oh, excuse me, cards turned in. So I don't know how they have more cards turned in than kids registered, but hey, whatever. <laughs> this also was pretty cool. This is um, another kit that they come up with. And this is to make Valentine's where the librarians actually cut out things and stuff, plus they put regular paper in there so they can make Valentine's for seniors, which I think is also a very good thing. So anyway, that's the children's department. Uh, da, 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 da. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Rusty Olson. Okay, well, I continue to use uh, audio to read audio books, uh, listen to audio books. I'm Libby. Yes, Libby is a great um, service that we have. And I um, also continue to attend cheer yoga because I think I'm hooked on it now. <laughs> um, just a couple of things I wanted to mention. I really love the programs that we're that our community involved for example your dress a girl around the world program where actual um, dresses were made and then sent to a certain company i suppose that 
sends these dresses around to children who are, live in the third world countries. I really think that's a wonderful program that you have here. Plus another program, um, which was, I can't remember exactly what it was, but just the fact that you do so much community engagement is wonderful. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Steve I'd like to congratulate Jabez on the success of his podcast. I noticed in the program statistics packet that it's up 169% from where it was last year. So that's pretty awesome. And also um, whoever is responsible for the teen Instagram link tree is up 561% from last year. So congratulations. And I wanted to just say that I really like the, I don't know what it's called out in front in the lobby. That's like, a, it looks like a little free library, but it's for food. Uh, it's a, a little pantry. Little pantry. Um, little I've been pantry. putting a lot of food in there and I think it's a really great resource. I know that yeah. people use it a lot. So I think that's really valuable. Thank you. That's part of the coming together program uh, that the community does. And uh, those uh, boxes are actually being put on a, a map statewide so people can look up and see where they can get resources, where they can find food. It's a great program. Yeah. Yeah. In, in Cindy, the um, coming together food box is permanent, correct? It's not going to disappear. Is it, after, is it there just for a short time or is it? No, I, I don't think there's any time limit on it. I agree that is a, that's a great addition. All right, thank you. Okay, I will admit I did not attend any online programs this month, um, but I will try to do so next month. So the next item on our agenda is the secretary's report. Sue, would you um, like to read that? I copy or did you want me to read that? So did you have the report? Cindy, is there on the agenda? It's a, it's listed on the agenda. On so the, the, the report isn't in here, it's just the, the document. I mean the explanation, correct? Yes. <laughs> so my question is before she starts, so we've already done this. Has this been done already? Yes. Oh, that's why. So you're just, it's just a repeat. Okay, so that's why the document is on here. Thank you. The document is in the packet. Right. We had that last um, well, it, it wasn't uh, last month. It had not been filed. So it was at last month's meeting. In December, no, you read the from the state comp. Uh, State librarian, you read about the vacancies. Uh, that was the letter that you read last month. This is the secretary's report with regard to the levy. And Suzanne has to read it out loud. No, she no, she's looking for it. Oh, it's on the agenda. I know she's looking for it. A certified copy of the ordinance 21104 levy on the Sussman Factors of Niles, Maine Library, Cook County, Illinois. Financial year beginning July 1st, 2021, and ending June 30th, 2022, along with a certified trust and taxation, a certificate of compliance filed electronically with the Cook County Clerk on Monday, December 27th. 2021 ordinance is available for public inspection. The auditors filed the audit with the state controller. Okay, thank you. Trustee McCullough, the treasurer's report. Okay. Um, the treasurer's certificate and statement of operations for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2021. Was published and filed electronically with the Cook County Clerk. Now I have a treasurer's report for activity of December 2021. December is our sixth month of our budget year. At the close of the month, we had 
$793,206 in cash and investments. We also had property tax and other receivables of $3,740,765. Revenue for the month was $41,402. Salaries for December were $281,015. And employee benefits were $58,930 for a total of $339,945. Materials purchased were $42,507 for, for the month of December. Budget year to date, we have purchased $333,307 in new library materials. Library operating expenses for December was $19,369. General and administrative expense was $28,303. Utility costs for December were $12,982. Building and equipment maintenance was $16,176. Total expenditures for December are $480,230. So far for our budget year, our expenditures are $2,968,350. Which is uh, two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars under our budget. Thank That's you. it. Um, is there another document um, that needs to be explained in the financial report, Cindy? Another document? Yeah, the, the treasurer is supposed to read. He did read that already. I he read did. That. Okay. All right. Thank you. So that's the statement of operations. The treasurer's. Um, it's the yeah, statement. statement of operation. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure. All right, appreciate it. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the director's report. I have some questions about that. About the financials? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see, on page 30. I was looking at the expenditures for the programming. And um, so we're at page 30 towards the bottom of the page. Programming for adult and juvenile and support are all way down. They're only in the 30th, like 30th percentiles. And I'm wondering most of everything else, we're halfway through the year. Why it wouldn't be more like 50%? Why is that so low? Well, the children's uh, budget is mostly spent towards summer reading. So they, at this time of the year, they're not spending as much as they will be spending in June. Okay. So the bulk of that money gets spent in June if you go back and look at other years. Okay. You'll notice that. How about the adult then? So the adult is at 38%. Mm -hmm. And I would have to go back and ask the supervisor about that. I'm signing contracts all the time, so I'm not sure. If they also have more saved towards summer, I'm not sure. Could it be that we're just not able to do more programs? Uh, I don't know that. They have not expressed that to me specifically. I, that's a question I'd like answered is if it's because of lack of manpower that they can't, don't have the people to actually run the programs. Okay. If we can get that response, I sure. very much appreciate it. And there is nothing for public performing rights. Um, the um, well, that those are licenses that are paid uh, sort of once a year. Okay. So that doesn't happen every month. Um, and then the events is also that's the marketing department. Mm -hmm. So they don't, you know, it's when they have events. That they right. Have expenses there. Um, so yeah, most the the programs uh, all sort of uh, went virtual. So I'm not aware of any right. uh, programs that had to be rescheduled um, specifically. You know that a programmer couldn't attend and they wanted to reschedule it later. I don't think that that happened in December, but I can check on it. Okay. And then on page 31. Um, I was reminded that at last month's meeting, I had asked about the janitorial supplies and why they were $601 instead of $2,000, which was budgeted. 
Um, I was supposed to get that information after the meeting and I never did. So this month for janitorial supplies, it's the opposite. It's the first line on page 31. We have yeah. 5,556, whereas last month we had nothing. I'm sorry, not nothing. We had $601. So I also notice on the same page, there's zero under COVID supply. So I'm just a little concerned about how the building is being kept safe and clean. So it depends on when the orders are placed, what the inventory is and when the order is placed. It's not a set amount that we order every month. So it depends on when the orders are put in. So, so we only have a standing order that goes out for- For COVID janitorial supplies, supplies okay. no. And, and Dave, uh, you know, sort of, uh, ordered ahead a little bit so that we would be ready and stock, you know, when he left. So he probably was ordering a little bit more in November, not so much in December, stocking up the way he left. Mm -hmm. Or this is December, so he was ordering right. a little more in December as that was his last month, getting us sort of ready. So why he didn't order as much in January, I don't know. But like I said, it's ordered when it's needed so we have enough uh i can check with rich and see but yes i'm okay. confident we have enough okay thank you the covid supplies um i'd have to go back and see what that is we did order the kn95 masks for the staff um and they just came in so you'll see that on next month's statement um, those are disinfectant wipes masks uh, vinyl gloves, things like that. Yeah, she's so explaining that to us now, Joe. Thank you. So probably looking at November because I know Dave was purchasing some of. And he buys those as his inventory as runs needed, down. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if that covers all the questions, the next item on the agenda is the director's report. I would like to thank the board members, the Niles Coalition, and Pam Nelson, all who provided food gifts for the staff, um, including candy, cookies, coffee and bagels, donuts, and box lunch during the month of December. So uh, the staff appreciated it, and so did I. Thank you very much. Um, Carly Obrakta has moved to a full-time digital services assistant position, and she will also be assuming the role of the library's adult volunteer coordinator, um, a task that I began doing as an adult service assistant years ago and have been doing it ever since. I'm very happy to have help with that, that Carly uh, is taking that on, so that's great. Um, we have a few staff anniversaries, Greg McGowan, IT specialist, celebrates 10 years with the library this month, as does Aileen Hannon, adult and outreach services assistant. She also celebrates 10 years with the library this month. So I'd like to thank Greg and Aileen for their years of service to the community. Um, our COVID update, all district residents uh, can access library materials and services remotely through our website to check out ebooks, e audiobooks, e magazines, streaming movies, and music with their library card. The staff are available to help anyone get a library card and to answer questions or locate materials by phone, email, and chat. So you, you know, you do not have to come into the library to be able to get a library card. If you're not able to come in at this time because of the situation, reach out to us um, through email, by phone, or chat. And we can make sure that you can get that card to access all of the resources from home. I would like to thank the library visitors for their cooperation with another adjustment to our rules. A mask must be worn over the nose and mouth at all times. We continue to ask for the community's help with uh, washing hands and um, sanitizing often, especially after using any shared equipment in the library. Uh, wiping their computer stations before they use them and maintain a safe six foot social distance with staff and with each other. 
the public vending machines are covered for the time being as there's no uh, food consumption in the library. Pre-recorded mask required announcements play every hour. Scripted supplemental messages on masks required and no food consumption will be delivered by staff as needed. We've ordered the KN95 masks for staff um, and they will be offered to staff who want them. We still have surgical masks that are available in every department. Um, wearing both masks actually helps the KN95 last longer, putting the surgical mask underneath it. Staff are continued to be diligent with cleaning and distancing as we have throughout COVID. And we are adding a plexiglass shield to the passport office desk. So that there'll be a barrier between the I'm surprised staff members. Yeah, I know. I was too. Um, uh, I believe I sent you an email about the ILA legislative meetup. And I think there was a flyer uh, that. I had a question about that. Yes. We, uh, that's something, do we have to have that on the agenda to vote whether or not we can get paid, past the $15 paid for us? That should automatically come out of our, our members. So I do believe this year, because it lists on there that if you have an institutional membership, which we do, that it's free. So I think you can register well, okay. without yes. paying. I just want to verify that because I do want to register for that. Mm -hmm. And I feel that if it isn't, we need to make sure because I don't want to come back later and hear it's not going to be called. Well, I can clarify that. Um, the budget line item for the trustees was not reduced this year. Um, so it does cover um, the um, trustees' interest in attending the um, either workshops or online conferences. The, um, the disagreement was when we removed the, um, the Night of the Roses and the, what is it? Um, Breakfast with the legislators. The legislative um, No, that was. Um, it was because I went Excuse to me, may I speak? Forgive me. Okay, the, the difficulty occurred when the Chamber of Commerce events were brought up to attend and they were removed from our budget. So since that was, since the Chamber of Commerce was removed and not approved, the events for the Chamber were not approved. So um, that, we that did seemed- have to, a resident cover this. So that seemed, so the, the budget did not approve Chamber of Commerce events. And that's where the discrepancy was. You can use the, the trustee budget line item for um, workshops and what have you, but if the item wasn't approved by the budget, then the funding isn't available to fund that. That was the difference. But this has nothing to do with that. Thank you. I question that, and I don't wanna get into any more about that because there's other things that were put in that line item that also were not budgeted for. So that's why I question. Thank you. I do think that this. That, I would like to attend. Yeah, and I think that with the institutional membership, you we will be able to attend. So, is there the some $15. special number or something I have to put in when I register for this? Uh, I will call and ask. I didn't. I did Thank not. Thank you. I would very so. much appreciate it. Actually, Cindy, I registered and just gave them my name and that I was a trustee here at the library, and they just. And I got, and I, I received a response. So okay. I think you don't need any so then I don't okay. I, Before any. I registered, I just want to make sure. Is this the same um, congressional meeting as it's it real. used it right. used to be yeah, used a to, breakfast? It did, and yes. This year it's virtual. Suburbs, but now it's online. But this year because it's of COVID, virtual. it's virtual. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I already signed up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, then on page 34 of your um, packet, the monthly, I wanted to uh, just draw your attention to the box in the top, which talks about the difference between 2020 and 2021 with regard to COVID and where we were a year ago. Um, 
the library was open for technology appointments only. Mm -hmm. So um, we were doing no contact pickups. Uh, we had greeters in the vestibule and uh, the staff was at the service desk taking phone calls, emails, um, and uh, answering chat and all of the programs were being provided virtually. So, um, so then as you go through the statistics, <clears throat> comparing the this month with a year ago, and then on page 37, where there are the three boxes. Mm -hmm. um, so this is comparing July through December of the current year to last year, and then also going back to 2019. And then the statistical change is below. Um, so this is talking about the total material loans, the loans by different material types, and then the total visitors that came to the library. And so you can see that, um, particularly at the bottom one with the visitors, you can see that we uh, have had increases over last year. We're still not back to where we were with 2019, but uh, we're still down about half, but we have increased significantly over last year. So, you know, it's sort of like a hole we've got to dig ourselves out of getting back from COVID. So it does show progress. We're not there yet. We have a lot of work to do to make sure people are aware that we're open to make sure that they can access the resources that we have through their library card online. A lot of education around that, around making sure they know how to get materials from the library during this time. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Can I, can I make one comment on it? Um, the best measure of activity is original loans. And when you add the renewals on there, it, it just tells you, basically renewals are, say, it, it, it just tells you how long it takes people to return the material or how long it takes to read the book or whatever. So I think the way to compare apples to apples is always use original borrowings rather than uh, renewals combined with the borrowings because there's there's a uh, some of the renewals exceed the borrowings in many cases it depends on the item uh, so for example I, I think like in December now we actually had uh, 25,000 original borrowings and renewals far exceeded that I think one and a half times that something like that but uh, that would translate into a, a circulation of about 300,000 annually, which is about half of what we had pre-COVID on original borrowings. We were around 650,000. So for December, the original borrowings were 72,000 and the total renewals were 25,000. So it doesn't exceed the original borrowings. So you're looking what page is on it? page 34, right? Current month total checkouts. Oh, I see. All right. I'm just looking at the adults. Okay. So that's the total number 72,000. Mm -hmm. Total current month initial checkouts 24,000. Total month, current month total renewal. Yeah, no, you're right. It's twenty five thousand, oh. slightly more. Yeah, these are the numbers you're referring to are checkouts plus renewals. Yeah, the total. So right. that I, I was, I'm just referring to original borrowings. Yes, the twenty four thousand is the original borrowing. But in the libraries, library to library, library state recording, library national recording has always historically included renewals. And this has been gone over multiple times. Yeah, it's so not new. So it's. It's good to look at the material that's being checked out, but renewals has always been part of a library experience. You get the book, you come to the library, you take out more books than you can read in the period of time because you know you can renew them before you come back to the library. It's part of the experience. Right. 
of a so library. You checked out three books, and initially for that month it shows three. Then you didn't return two of them, we so they it. get counted again. Yeah, right. I, and then the next month they get counted. So it looks like you had instead of three books, you had six loan and borrowings, and it's it distorts the actual number of borrowings that in reality exist. No, because in the library world, that's what we count. We count. I, I know, but you know, sometimes things are upside down. Well, well if you're, it depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking, if you're wanting to look at the, the flow of materials off of the shelf and all of that, that's a different way of looking at the library. The usage of the library is looking at loans and renewals. Because I'm going to come in and I'm going to take out six books because I'm not going to come back till next month. Right. I don't want to have to take out a book and come back and a book and come back and a book and come back. That's not the library experience. Library experience is you come in, you gather the stuff that you need, you take it home, and you know you have time to work with it. You can renew it as long as somebody else isn't waiting for it. No guarantee you're going to be able to renew it, but you have the option to renew it if nobody else wants it before it comes back. So it's just the way the for, library world. For, for example, if we were to make our uh, borrowing period two months, then we would have hardly any renewals and we'd have different numbers, but I mean. Yes, but you'd also have less circulation because people wouldn't be able to get the material. So you'd have to buy more material to satisfy the need. Well, like, like I say, is a renewal is just an indication that somebody didn't finish the book. Some people can finish that book or three books in, in the time period. Some people can fi finish only one, you know. A renewal is a service we offer to patrons right, service, to allow service. them time right. to enjoy their materials. I think we're talking about words and definitions. But yes. Yeah. Talking about experience. Can we get back to listening to her report, please? Okay. Thank you. Cindy, would you, I had questions about the statistics. Would you rather I wait till everything's done or is now better? Um, I think that, I think that's all I had. It's, the program sort of speaks for themselves, I think, unless you have questions. I had some on the statistics. Okay. Um, on page 35, I was looking at the visits to the homebound patrons. Uh, looks like it was 83 for the current month, and last year was 200, so it's down by 58.50%. So last year, we were doing virtual visits, um, and so they were doing, they were calling. They were calling and checking in with people. Um, making, okay. You know, sort of like wellness checks or just, you know, checking in, trying to avoid isolation, mm -hmm. which is a big push last year, especially with age options. Mm -hmm. And a problem during COVID is that people felt isolated because they were home alone. They didn't really. So outreach was doing wellness checks and calling and checking in and talking to people. Okay. So the, in, the number last year includes those virtual visits. You're not doing that now? With the no, council? because they are able to go in person. They're okay. still able to go in person to the to visit and drop off books last year we oh. weren't even dropping off books oh, for okay. a period of time because of COVID. right yeah and then so getting people to try to online getting them to try to check out a book online things like that so okay. thank you uh, so one, one more thing that. if we compare even with renewals and original borrowings, if we go back becky is talking now please drop after she's done can you ask your question can, can i finish no i'm okay. sorry joe um oh Trustee Keene is still oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. I noticed starting on page 39 um, for number of programs column, there's a lot of zeros. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are these are uh, virtual programs. And um, the um, IPLER mm -hmm. and our reporting. Okay. Uh, so we are allowed to report attendance for a virtual program for 12 months mm -hmm. but you only count the program once once you do the program you count it once for the next 11 months if anybody accesses that video and mm -hmm. and watches it you can record that as attendance but you only count the program once so if you see here it says um baby laps sit rhyme with miss rachel eyes nose and cheeky cheek chin Mm -hmm. that first aired a year ago, 1220. So this is the last month that we'll be able to collect viewers for that program. Okay. So that'll come off next month. 
And so that's why these are listed here with zeros. That means it was already counted once as a program because you can only count it once. So it was counted on a report before? The Isn't first that? month it showed up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So some of these from last February, Confusing. it was a one in February. And after that, it's a zero until the 12 months. Okay. Thank you. When you can collect the uh, virtual attendance. I mean, it's very interesting. Thank you. It's interesting watching the amount of uh, certain ones are a lot more popular than others. As time goes on, less people are accessing the older program. But, and uh, so that finishes my report. Thank you. Uh, Joe has something to say. Oh, and yes, I'm sorry. Joe, I did want to comment on something pertaining to your report, if that's okay. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what. Why don't I just call each trustee and then Thank we you. can that get through the line. Nice. Okay, Trustee McCullough. Well, what I wanted to say, when I analyzed the data, I went back on some of the annual reports from 2011 to 2019, pre-COVID. Okay. Circulation was slowly declining on original borrowings. That's and in, true. Including circulation with renewals at this point uh, we're circulating about half of what we circulated prior to COVID so we're at about the 50 percent level at this point of what we did in 2019 in, in that fiscal year so we so have, that sort we, of aligns with being at only 50 percent for visitors as well we're having less people coming into the building right, and less right. so yeah but is it only stuff from the building, it doesn't count. Like no, it living. counts everything. Uh, not programs, just but it's, circulation. But material circulation, not virtual. You're talking yeah, about saying. books. Virtual is fun up there. Including, it, it? It includes oh, including everything? Yeah. Okay. It's about 50% of what it was. So we're circulating about half the number. Of, if I go by original borrowings, we're circulating, forget the renewals, we're circulating about 300,000 pieces of material, magazines, books, DVDs in a year. Prior to COVID, uh, I think it was 600, around 650,000 in, in the 2019 year, roughly, approximately. So we're about at halfway. We haven't recovered yet from, from exactly. right. after COVID. We have COVID. not recovered. That's what I wanted to say. That's okay. my point. All right, thank you. We have our work cut out for us, that's for sure. All right, All thank of us. you, Trustee McCool, Trustee Schoenfeld. I just want to commend you on doing such a thorough job and reference all the detail and all the programs and all the work that you actually have done. This is very thorough and very well did. Thank you. It takes a, a, the entire staff contribute at the end of the month. Everybody's putting all of this data together and it takes time to compile it. So thank you. Trustee Rosansky. Yes. My uh, comment was uh, not a question was a comment on uh, teen services. They had a program that they did with the Forest Preserve Service of Cook County, where the kids actually did wilderness survival programming. I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really great pictures. Cool. Thank you, and thank them. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also the, uh, the dogs that came in to help with the kids when they were Studying over finals. Yeah, that was oh. good. Thank you, Trustee Olson. Um, I just want to congratulate you on um, your total number of questions that are um, at the service desks, 1,931. I mean, if anybody wants to know what a librarian does while she's at her desk when other people see her. She's busy answering questions, looking up answers for people. 1,931 questions, 62 questions per day on average. So there's no such thing as librarian just standing around doing nothing as a comment has been in the past. That's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Keen. I believe, um, did you have more questions? I just have one more question. All right, go ahead. It's about the patron comments. I'm wondering if all the comments that get put in the box are printed in this. 
report. Um, generally, unless we can't read it or, I'm sorry, unless we can't read it, you know, like there are some that are just unlegible, but yes, we put the comments in the, in here. Okay, and I do I remember correctly that you used to respond to them? Susan used to respond to them. Okay. Um, and I did for a few months, but. Um, Okay. All right. That's all. Thank you. I mean, if they would leave contact information, I would respond to them, but I don't know that they're coming back and reading my response here. I so I wasn't sure I remember, who the like, there used to response be a comment was. In the thing, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that would be just the sentence added, thanking each one for their comments. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is number nine, communications. And I believe we do have a letter. Cindy, did you want to? Uh, what is it, communication? Oh, wait a minute. Am I? You know what? I think it's me. Never mind. My mistake. This is from last month. I didn't pull it out. Oh, one more thing. I'm sorry. From. I thought that we had to approve that um, video conference, or it wasn't a conference, but the video website. Wait a minute, is it the website update that that you got last month, or what? No, uh, that um, we were going to work with other libraries. Oh, the Illinois Library Presents yes. contract. Yeah, I thought um, we were going to approve that this time. The um, participation in the six month trial is closed at this time. So we have a little bit of time to work through the lawyer's comments on the contract, um, which I have to say, I got a little sidetracked this month and did not get back to that. But um, the lawyer had made con comments on the contract that need to be sort of reviewed with uh, probably with Northbrook Library because it is their contract. Um, and then at the end of the six month trial period, uh, I think there'll be another opportunity for us to join. So that will be in the summer sometime. Oh, okay. So we can get our. Okay. Thank you. Get ready for that. So there are correspondence here from CCS. Okay. So that is, I, I saw yeah, the date from I thought CCS. It was Thank you. Uh, so for the LSAP support grant that Rails got, they divvied it up amongst the membership. And so we received $1,378.99 uh, for that. And then the, we received a letter from the Secretary of State with regard to uh, a, a brochure that they create every year about um, a guide to literacy efforts. And it lists all of the literacy efforts throughout the state. So Oakton Community College is included in that. Um, so they sent the new guide and it was distributed and uh, circulated around the um, supervisors so they could all take a look at it. Oakton is still um, not doing in-person classes no. yet here at the library, so. Next item on the agenda is new business. 10A, do I have a motion to accept the resignation and terminate the relationship between Evans, Marshall, and Pease and the Niles Main District Library? I motion. Second. Okay. okay, we have a movement and a second. Is there any discussion, Trustee McCullough? Um. Well, that leaves us without a, an accounting firm. We have to find somebody else. So they're competent people. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, hostility on the board drove them away. Okay, Trustee Schoenfeld. I'm deeply saddened by what has transpired. So now we have back to square one. Okay, trusting Rosansky. Uh, yeah, I'd like to vote on this. Uh, 
I think it's kind of a done deal. They walked out, then uh, they're hired again, then they're not, they quit, and then they're hired, and then they quit. I like to be settled with what we're doing with them so we can go on and actually have an accounting firm that's going to stick with us. Trustee Olson. Um, yes, could you just clarify the fact that he, um, the representative from the company actually sent a letter of resignation. And then we, for some reason, didn't accept it. Is, is that what happened? Or? He sent a letter. There was a communication about resigning because of the mistreatment at the board meeting. No, wait, you, I don't like your choice of words. Well, I'm sorry, that's exactly what well, it was. Please watch the video. Us, so that's it. It. Okay, it's all over, it's all over the news, it's on the video, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So well, yes, he did walk out. Is that the, the situation you're talking about? Yes. Because there was more So he okay. resigned, let's just get to the facts. He resigned and this, we're finally accepting his resignation. Is that, because. And he wasn't, so this means he was still an employee at the last and, board meeting i had a motion on the table explaining the situation he resigned because of the mistreatment at again the board meeting. never mind we, let's we just i you know I you know we can't hide question. the truth i'd like to get it out well, for the record count on so he, the truth pertaining to you and your side it's then? not or are we going to be hammered out of here let okay. Her ask her question. Never. I don't. I withdraw the question. I have no fine. question. I gladly That's accept fine. this uh, resignation and termination. Thank you, Trustee Keen Adams. Yes. Um, it's a really sad thing. It is. It's a sad thing that this board can't agree on what is professional and what is not. It's not professional to present wrong information when you're giving a presentation on a levy. Point he of had, information. Um, I'm. Point of information. Can I finish? Point of information. <laughs> I am requesting point of information so far, regarding your statement. Interrupted all of us. Yeah, he gave us the wrong point numbers. of information. <laughs> then pull it up on your. Pull it what up, incorrect Alan. information? Point he of gave us wrong information. We called no, him on it. He had the wrong numbers and his papers. Thing, point of information. Off. I'm we not talking to you, Trustee Rosanne. And then. Point of information. And then. Specifically, please explain. If you can give me the papers that he had, then I can give you the numbers. Point of information. Okay, then you let can't me make continue. a statement that you cannot you cannot verify. And let me continue. Point of information. Well, you continue. just made a statement <laughs> well, that you couldn't <laughs> verify. I, 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 if there's anything you want me to verify, I'm, I'm available. She's that, claiming that this he is, was mistreated. Excuse me, the conversation isn't between you and I. And I'm sorry that I even engaged in it. But Becky, <laughs> Trustee Keen Adams, I'm asking you. Uh, point of information regarding your statement. Well, and I'm saying I'm going to move it. on because I don't have the Thank paper you. in front of me. Thank you. So then he stated he resigned and he walked out of the meeting. He followed that up with an email saying, yes, I resign. That should have been the end of the story. Yes, that is true. You can check that. Oh, oh I can't. I can't confirm it either way because I don't have any of the documentation. I have them on my computer if you'd like to see them. Oh no! Continue. So he well, he stated in the meeting that he resigned. Mm -hmm. He walked out, and he mm -hmm. then followed up with an email right. saying that he resigned. So that should have been the end of the deal. And as far as what I wrote on Yelp, I'll read it to you because it is factual. I'm a trustee of the library where this firm has been employed. That is true. One partner walked out and quit during a board meeting. That is true. And subsequently emailed a confirmation of that. That is true. Somehow they seem to think they are still under contract and will continue working. That's because somebody must have gone and contacted them afterwards. It wasn't me. Regardless, three of us have clearly and strongly informed them that we do not want them to return. That's another fact. I have emailed them twice about this, another fact, and they have yet to respond, another fact. I think there's another sentence on the bottom. There are a few more, yes. Mm -hmm. Those are the facts that I just read. And the rest of it is my opinion. There are so many things wrong right. here. Yep. That's where point of information would occur. But you're telling me you just read out to people that I said a bunch of lies, and those are all facts. You did. 
those, those, are those comments on the bottom are exactly those what are opinions talking. and opinions does are not matter? the same it yes does, it does you you know what the comments you made were incorrect no they're not they're my opinion so it can't be correct or incorrect you have your opinions and i don't agree with them and you don't agree with mine that doesn't make them true or false the fact of the matter is get a when dictionary you get on a public site yeah i can put my make, opinion and make those kind of comments that have destroyed how many how many professionals oh, have walked yeah, out of here? Just they nonsense. weren't professional when they walked out of the meeting. That was not professional. And there's no way we should have been trying to hire them back. That's unprofessional. So yes, let's vote, please. Okay, so now I would like to respond. And the way that you brought it up at the last meeting, reading that statement, yeah, that we should have been voting on whether we, we didn't even know about that rescission. That should have been on the agenda, which it was not. So it should not have been read, just like tonight when you tried to squeeze okay. something in. For, well, actually, follow I just, the rules. Tonight, I wanted to clarify all the misconceptions about our public comment. Then you should have put it on the apply, agenda. Why? It's, I, I have a right to respond to public comment. In but, other, in other. Things. But it, excuse me if I could finally finish my sentence. Go ahead, finish. But as as Director Rademacher pointed out, the 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 comments that I was addressing were not from tonight's meeting. So yes. They will go under other. But back to the situation with um, the accountant. He came here, presented a levy. Again. Use the right word, please. He, he came on. here and okay. presented he a levy. He did. Correct. And there were comments made trying to discredit him. He tried to explain. He got no. so upset. Point of information. From okay. what comments were made. The, the accountant stated that according to the Cook County, actually that I might have, according to the, to the Cook County um, levy, treasurer, um, it's called the CTA, the Cook County, um, Well, anyway, for, on the Cook County site, if you go mm -hmm. into the, you go under no, um, the, it's okay. the library. No, it's okay you do not have your information, but not me. The Cook, yeah, the Cook County site for levy information for the library stated that the levy amount for 2020 was $7.19 million. The, the accusations that were made was that he was wrong and he was incorrect or he didn't know what he was talking about because Greg Pritz said he used a different number for last year's levy. The fact of the mm -hmm. matter is there were two, these are two different conversations. In order to determine our levy, we need to use the accurate funding we received from the Cook County Clerk's Office, which was 7.19 not the amount that Greg Pritz wrote in his levy presentation. So automatically he was told he gave us wrong information and then this bantering pursuit. Excuse me, wrong word. So he ended up leaving. There were other comments that were made. As far as, um, I think you, you said somebody contacted him or I, I, I forgot what your, what your comment was. I received an email from him um, rescinding his resignation. And before that, the fact of the matter is this board did not vote to accept his resignation. That's the subject matter. Okay. So let's vote. Why didn't so you share that back, email with us? Pardon me? Why didn't you share that email with us? Which email? The one where Any he rescinded his resignation. Because it was in the middle of a month, I didn't see the reason it was going to come to the board meeting. It would have prevented every a lot of email. This. Oh no, 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 no! Nothing, oh, yes, yes, nothing yes. would have been prevented. If I, if I come to a board it's meeting, it's called with transparency. The transparency. And provide you the information. We shouldn't end up in this position. It's every called time transparency. Get, every time I get an email from someone, I don't send, I don't share it with you until it becomes an issue, because it may not have become an issue. So it's not being non-transparent either. But you know what, because we're such a derogatory board, and because Excuse we me. find Point pleasure generation. in disagreeing, we can't see. I find to nothing about forward. this pleasurable. Let me make that clear. Well, then please, let's try not to attack each other. 
again, please just lead by example then, and we will follow in I line. do it all the time. Oh. If, if, you, if you recall, Greg said the assessor or the treasurer okay, adds 3% on yes. onto the amount that we um, levy. Mm -hmm. And that's where the difference comes in. But the actual amount is that higher amount that would be the levy. Because the 3% is for people that okay, file you know appeals why, and things like yeah, that. That's fine, Joe. Let's just let, let, please let him circle. speak. Thank you. I think if all the comments are done. Saying that's exactly what I was saying. Okay. Never mind. All right. If all the comments are made, then we. Now, can I have vote. another comment, actually. Um, we never did vote on hiring a firm instead of another business manager. So that's not how. I mean, we can't just proceed like that. No, but there's been no decision as Excuse a board. Excuse me, I don't understand the question or the comment. The business manager resigned. Right. We never voted to replace that position with a firm. Um, actually, that's my decision. Yeah. I'm running the library on how on whether the business manager is needed and to replace the business manager or to go with an outside firm. Is it really? Yes, yes it, is. it is. Okay. We, and have you when, made that decision? When this, when Evan Marshall and Keys was hired the first time in the last 22 years that I remember that the board made that decision to hire an outside accounting and bookkeeping service other than to do the annual audit. So that is the exception. It'd be nice if you would, that. you know, assert that when it's also your responsibility to hire staff and not have them come before the board. Those kind of things are also your responsibility. Well, that's a, a new policy that the board did vote on. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting that my job is to not follow policy that the board has accepted. I'm suggesting you could advocate better. I could do what? Advocate better. Well, possibly. We could probably all do better. Well, thank you, Cindy, for handling all of these changes and unexpected situations these past several months to you and your staff. Uh, we really appreciate it. Nobody understands how complicated things have gotten. And thank you for, for doing a wonderful job. We are grateful. OK, let's move to accept the resignation. Can we yeah, we I'll repeat the question because there's been a great deal of conversation. Thank you. Do we I have a motion a to accept the resignation and terminate the relationship between Evans, Marshall, and Pease and the Niles Main District Library? I already made that motion. Make it again. No, we made the motion. We talked about it. Now it's a vote. Okay. Time for voting. It's a vote. Trustee Yes. Trustee Schultz? Yes. Trustee Makula? Yes. Trustee Rosensky? Yes. Trustee Olson? Yes. Yes. Okay, the next item on the agenda is 10B. I'd like to move that we table this. Do I have a second? Okay, I need a vote to table. So, um, Margaret, if you could take the role to table. First and second. No. 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 Yes. 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 Okay, I would like to just make a couple of comments for clarification. Wait, but can we hear the. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. It's she said three to three. Okay. Okay, I'd like to make a few comments for clarification. Um, this agenda item was to, in, to have the director engage a security company to perform a security assessment. Wait a Trustee, we're on C? B. No, we're on B. 10B. 
Yeah. On the new agenda. agenda. Do you have the new one or oh, the old one? The no. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the old agenda. Okay. The one that we discussed today. I emailed it to you on Monday. Yeah. This one? The new yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank Are you. we ready? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. So, um, but Trustee Olson, you just tabled this item. And were you not aware that was what you tabled? I point of order. I was point of order. Becky tabled it. No, but you voted to table. Were but you, aware? you read it. You read it. Were you aware? Well, we're it doesn't on. matter. I couldn't find it. I just wanted to make sure you knew you tabled it. Yes. Okay. Just just checking. All right. Um, the comments that I would like to share is that this is um. The security, uh, to engage in a security company for an assessment is not new. Um, Trustee Rosansky and I met um, with um, Director Rademacher to discuss the facilities department and um, security was part of that conversation. And we spoke about equipment and we spoke about um, the security um, needed to protect the patrons and the staff. And um, at that time, Trustee Rosansky, uh, well, I had previously asked for some information you regarding equipment. equipment. And at that time, Trustee Rosansky suggested that we contact a security company. I don't remember suggesting that. I'll oh, be okay. I'll be but you did. You and I and right. I agreed with you. Fine. So because we're but that my main concern with security was having feet on the ground. And we've had a couple of security issues this month where if we actually had people in the building, which we didn't have, because one of our board members said we don't need somebody in here all of the hours the library is open okay, and i was in on that stick to the fact so seriously we need to have people not more cameras because cameras are wonderful we have pictures of these people who are doing wrong but without the actual people to address them and ask them to please correct the situation Trustee rosansky during our conversation with director rademacher i was we talked about home. we talked about situations in the library and the need to have cameras because departmental staff is not always in these areas and it poses situations. So that was the reason okay. you said then let's just get I a firm fine. or a company and I agreed with you. So that's why this item is on okay, the agenda. Fine. I'm not disputing what priority, you're saying. I think the priority is to have the bodies in the building that one of our board members feels we don't need. Well, I, I you know, and hearsay, I can't. Uh, what I'm trying to say is to have a computer, to have what is this equipment. Going to cost? I don't know, but you know what? I think the protection of staff and patrons is not is, isn't a price tag. I mean, everyone has adequate um, security in their buildings. We, we just need to update ours because we have some areas where we're in need of it. So that was the reason this is on the agenda. Now, I'll tell you what, since it seems like there's going to be some discussion, let me at least call out the trustees so we can do this in an orderly fashion. Fine. Trustee McCullough? In investigating, investigating what we had. Uh, we can had I just excuse? We don't have a motion on the, on the table yet. Pardon me? We don't have a motion oh, you're right. on mistake. the table to have okay. this discussion. No. You're right. Excuse me? Nothing. I just so, do we need to make All right, that? So, we, I guess, so anyway, so that's the reason why this is on the table. So, I guess what we can do now is I'll repeat the motion since we already. The table failed. Say Move. it again, just for clarification. She is, she is going to say it again. Okay. Move to authorize the executive director to engage a security company to perform a security assessment. So moved. Second. Or would you please take the roll? Are we going to have the oh, We have to have the discussion. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. 
Trustee McCullough. Well, we have boots on the ground. We pre previously had boots on the ground. What Dave was scheduling people to do was a walkabout uh, four times a day for about 10 minutes. That was our boots on the ground. That's it. We're open for 11 hours. That's 40 minutes out of 11 hours. <clears throat> oh, plus um, at, at close, they, they do a, a checkout that nobody's still in, on the premises. But during our operating hours, we just had that service. That's, that's our boots on the ground. So basically, we're, we, we need to have the people that are on the floor, that eight to 12 people, whatever it amounts to at any one time, if they see something, they need to say something and report. And we, we probably uh, need to have a system where we, we have a planned response of some sort. We have such a system. Let's remember we're talking about the staff. Mm -hmm. And this is a motion to basically get a consultant of some kind to do an assessment. We're not gonna evaluate operations in Thank a public you. session. That's true. Thank you. Okay, if that's all, Trustee McCullough? I, yeah. All right, this, is, this is for cameras, basically. Right, equipment. Yes. Trustee I agree with the assessment. I think we do need to have something just to get a synopsis as to what this really needs to be in place and for the safety of the patients and the employees. All right, thank you. Trustee Rosansky. Yes, okay. We can have an assessment. But more important than the assessment is to have the actual bodies who don't just pace around for 10 minutes. They're actually in the building and can be called. We've had two, inc well, okay. one incident that Excuse I know me, of Trustee where we couldn't. Rose, Trustee Rosansky, I think um, it was decided this conversation is strictly about the Fine. equipment. Fine. All right, thank you. But you need to have, yeah. We need to have that listed. Is it just on our website? Like what are you, you talking said in about? The email that put that job. Yes, it's Shouldn't on the it website. Be posted elsewhere. Yes, it will be posted elsewhere. But uh, the see, job, the maintenance the security maintenance security person, supervisor of maintenance and security, has been posted on the website, and it will be posted on Rails and any other place. Okay, if sooner than later would be mm -hmm. nice so that hopefully we get somebody. Well, yes. All right, thank you. Um, Trustee Olson. Okay, um, this motion is only to engage a company to perform an assessment. Yes. That's all it is. Why are people talking about cameras and because bodies? That's what they're and, gonna I mean, to see if I don't understand. Working. The assessment is for equipment. Equipment well, includes, does, no, the assessment is a security say, assessment. That's what it says. Perform but a security assessment. It doesn't mean assessment. necessarily equipment. A well, security assessment. Well, security. that's a, well, what they're reading into it is making things confusing. Because okay. How you, would you like to explain it? What, the, what are you I'm not going to explain be? this. I didn't put this motion be? on here. Pardon? What are you reading this agenda item? I I assume this means that a company will come in and look at what our um, procedure is now and suggest an improvement or some kind of evaluation. That's all. It's not to go out and purchase cameras or. No, it's an assessment. And then we'll uh, go just from there. merely an assessment that has to come back to the board then for further. Absolutely. Yes. That's the procedure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Keene. Uh, yeah, I think the staff would probably agree that their safety is one of my top priorities. And I don't feel that we need to have a security assessment. The cameras that we have now were updated just two years ago. <laughs> Um, and they run on power over Ethernet, POE, which was installed when we had our last network switch update. So everything is up to date. And that's why I don't feel that we need this. Once again, the assessment is to cover the entire library. We do not have adequate cameras 
covering the entire That is your library. opinion. That is not a fact. No, it's been determined by the situations that arise. And unless a person is there, we're not aware of what transpires, mm. which, is not a, which is not safe. Well, I disagree. Okay, thank you. So you're talking about cameras again. This is a security assessment and yes. you're already, oh, you're already going out to buy cameras. So no, she is. Well, the way she's talking. Well, okay. That's your opinion. Okay, um, if there aren't any more comments, um, Margaret, would you please call the roll? Yes. Yes. You know what? Uh, no, because I thought about it, and yeah, we just updated two years ago, so no. Um, I'm not happy the way this is. No. No. Okay, the next item on the agenda is 11 executive session. Do I have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of reviewing executive session minutes and the selection of a candidate to fill the trustee vacancy? So moved. Second. Okay, call the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, before casting my vote, I want to say a couple of things. We're about to do this for a second time, the voting for a candidate, solely because of the utter refusal of some trustees to compromise the first time we interviewed candidates. And so the Secretary of State has gotten involved. At our last meeting, President Durblick promised to reach out to each trustee individually for input on how to select a new trustee. She did not do this. In fact, by January 8th, we hadn't heard from her at all. Also, we asked multiple times to include an agenda item for tonight for discussion of the selection process. We feel that it is in good faith to hold this discussion before the public. Don't you think the patrons and voters deserve that? This was the perfect opportunity to be, to be transparent and to reassure the community that we are listening to them. And President Derblick has refused to allow this discussion in open session. I will make my vote to prove that I'm willing to work together and compromise for the greater good, although I fear we will end up with the same results as last time. I vote yes to go into executive session. Okay, and I'd like to respond to some of the um misstatements i did Point of send order. an email to the trustees asking them to send their suggestions as how they would like to handle this process when did I you received, do that i received when did you do that i don't have the date it doesn't matter it does you, matter you and i have already engaged in this conversation right, through email you're aware of it all right let's just drop Previous it can we email just go i sent to the trustee was on Monday night. I had a conversation with Trustee Rosansky, or not a conversation, an email ex oh expressing gosh. her her views and her suggestions, hoping so, I would get a response, which I didn't get until Monday. I sent it on the eighth. You sent it on Saturday, and I responded. Uh, on that Monday. was the second one. Can I we said. just go to executive session? You know what? Office? It's obvious that this board is just. Can we go to executive here with, session? Here we go. I don't Another. Feel like are we going to go there and just argue? And by the way, just for the record, the appointment of a of a trustee is done in executive session. It's fine. It, it is. It's okay, okay. So I don't see it. why I. It's the it. way we Thank are you. planning we on have doing papers it. And pencils. However you plan on doing it, we'll be discussed in executive session. Bye. 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 Oh, a new one? Thank you. Well, this is the emails I got today and a list. Oh. And the ones that's highlighted, I've got 